I'm Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Good evening, Marissa. Good evening. Greetings all the way in New Jersey. I am in Paramus, New Jersey. So I was hoping when I looked out my hotel window this morning that I would have seen like a skyline of New York City or something, Mm -hmm. but I must be facing the the wrong way or I'm not close enough to the river. I don't know. Yeah. I am in New Jersey for two days of meeting, so hopefully the the highway going by my hotel or the cars parked up beeping won't make too much noise. (laughs) Well, we understand. How's your week going? Good. You know, it's been a dreary week here. The, uh, the day we're recording, we're on like our third day of rain, and it is hitting me that summer is over and <laughs> fall feels like it's almost Summer's over. Summer's over. <laughs> we're yep. moving right along here. I, I had to wear my jacket today. Um, so, you well, know, hoping we get a little bit more fall before oh, we Oh, I think we will. I think, we, I think we're still going to, you know... Indian summer is after you have a really good frost, so mm. I don't know if we've had a really good frost. We're going to have some nice weather, I promise. It's going to be beautiful. Because I have things but, on that bucket list that still right. that are we outdoor. Get... <laughs> hey, I had a listener say to me today at a meeting, but this is a listener from Florida, he said, I really love the episode about the bucket list. Oh, wow. That's so sweet. So, yeah, congratulations on that Thanks. one. Thanks. You got a shout out from sunny South Florida. Yeah, and it wasn't my mom. (laughs) And it wasn't your mom, (laughs) which was great. So today, the title of my post for today was paper, digital, or both? Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, so that was, in. in, so you said, when I asked you what you thought of it, you said, well, it's different. Yeah. So what's different about it? I just thought this was uh, a post that caused me to think a little bit um, about just like how we go about our daily lives. Okay. So a little bit different, you know, not There's so no much leadership of, focus on this. Right. No, no. And not so much. Um, there's not a lot of like internal reflection required. You kind of know right. what you do here. Yeah. And, and it's so I just thought it was practical. Some practical. No real growth uh, and development either. It's well, just kind of there, right? Just some, I mean, I think there's some ideas for yes, development. Yeah, definitely. Right. And and I honestly don't know. Oh yeah, I do know why I thought about this because on my way to work, because I wrote this. I think I wrote this Monday morning first thing, mm-hmm. and you were probably shocked that it came so quick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it wasn't. It had to be Tuesday because I was. No, it was Monday because I was on you vacation. Were off. I wrote yeah, this. It was I Monday. wrote this on vacation. That's what mm-hmm. it was. So I was listening to a podcast about achieving your goals, and um, it it talked about the the value of writing out your goals and. And really, so so the point, paper, digital, or both, that really relates to my planner system. Mm-hmm. And and I have a really unique planner system um, that, that we can talk about in a minute. But So that's really where this came from. But the benefits of writing things out by hand, a better memory recall. I mean, clearly, if you write things down... You're going to remember them better. And I had just, uh, our listeners probably will, will realize that I had done a couple, two different companies that had to do 360 assessments. Mm-hmm. And in one company, I met with 65 people. And I handwrite all the notes. I have, I have forms that I use for each person I'm meeting with. And somebody even said to me, you know, why don't you just take your laptop and type it right away? I said, well, that's kind of rude, <laughs> you know, to somebody's talking to me and I'm sitting there typing. Mm-hmm. Um, but but what I realized was that when I go back home, and a lot of times I would even do some of these summaries in the evening. Uh, I did one in a car. My wife was driving and, and, and I was typing. But one of the things I found was that as I read my handwritten notes, I literally can recall unbelievable details about the context of that note. Mm-hmm. And I firmly believe it has to do with the fact that I hand wrote it. Mm-hmm. as opposed to just typing it. Because when we handwrite, it takes longer. So we have to be thinking more about what we're writing than just hitting some keys on a keyboard. And and, and literally, the, the studies have shown that, that writing notes longhand um, offer us better short-term and long-term recall because, because the writing it in our own words brings this, this, this it's an event. Almost. Maybe that's the way to put it. Um, and I think you even mentioned that 
that you when you used to study you would create unique why don't you share with mm -hmm. that you created unique things when you were <laughs> studying for certain tests and that was amazing i think you should share that <laughs> well i had a lot of interesting uh processes i guess um but i grew up in a time like, when i was in school like computers were widely available we had them in the classroom um you know, when I had to submit papers, they were typed. It wasn't a handwritten thing. But um, I do remember when I would study, I would, um, when I would be in class, I would handwrite my notes. And then for the same reason that that you described, like you felt that you could recall the context, the emotion, emphasis, all of those things a lot better than just typing it out. And so then I would go through my notes, read them and retype them word for word. Then I would print them and take the physical papers and highlight, read, so read them again, highlight, annotate in the margins, um, and kind of create these study guides that were all based off of handwritten notes. So, mm -hmm. and it wasn't even just about writing the notes, but it was like the, like you said, the way you could recall different things. Right from your memory and um, just kind of like, it is like an iterative process. Exactly. Yeah. What, 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 what also it, the critical thinking piece of it, it says writing notes by hand sharpens critical thinking because it allows our brains to process the information at a deeper level. Mm -hmm. As you write, your brain makes connections between the deeper thoughts and it allows you to be more creative and have better recall. And, so we're, we're, yeah, and I mean, think about it, that makes sense. If you're writing something and all of a sudden, you know, you have, say you've got three sentences and you realize by the end of the third sentence, like, hey, this part of this sentence is very closely tied to the first sentence I wrote. You know, you can circle words, draw lines between yes. them, arrows up, like all kinds of annotations that, you know, you wouldn't necessarily be able to do as easily on something i guess if you were working with like a surface or was it like an ipad pro i don't even know but sure. you could i guess go about doing something similar but right. not quite the same for the for the critical thinking piece because right sometimes i think we do get into this zone where we're just typing i know you mentioned this with your planner too like when you're looking at you're say you're looking at your iPhone and you've got iCal and you can see like, okay, here's my list view of the things I've got going on today, but you might not fully be able to understand because they reach, you know, one line item. So even right. if it's a four hour event versus a 30 minute event, they all look kind of equal, but when you have them written out in a paper planner, you can kind of assess like, okay, this is a significant portion of my day. Sure. What kind of pre preparation do I need for this? Or, hey, you know what? I didn't leave myself like enough of a buffer between these two meetings or events. And, I'm, you know, if one runs late, I'm going to, my whole day will be thrown off. How can I adjust? So I think it does force us to think a little bit deeper about what is going on. It, it really does. And so I don't want people to think that you and I are just archaic and anti-technology <laughs> because really we're not. I think we're no. both pretty, pretty into technology. So, mm -hmm. you know, in my post, I talked about the fact that I have an iPhone, an iPad, an iMac, and then a PC, a laptop. Mm -hmm. And all four of those devices, my calendars are all synced. Mm -hmm. And my Evernote app that I use for keeping notes is also synced. So everything is, is on all the devices. So it would be really easy for me to just say, I'm good, I'm good to go. But what I realized was I needed that moment because I was a Franklin Planner user for years. I mm -hmm. probably used a Franklin Planner for 25 years maybe. Um, if I wouldn't have been cleaning house and throwing out all my storage binders, I would have known how many years were it. But I, <laughs> I purged those. It was hard. It was hard to let go of them, but I had to. <laughs> but what I do is, is and, and you've seen it because I carry it around. I have a, mm -hmm. a full-size um, leather-bound portfolio, if you want to call it that, that has the discs in it so that I can punch the papers and make my own binder, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a, a an agenda page, a day planner page that, I borrowed some ideas from one of my mentors and I customized it for myself. And so literally every, so I have a month's worth in there, but I fill them out 
on a Sunday night for the following week. And what I do is I take, I open up any one of my devices that has my calendars and I go to the right page and I literally handwrite every single meeting or event or coaching session into that planner. And the reason why I do it is that as I'm writing that down, like when I would write down recording podcast, I'm making this, I'm developing this mental picture about recording our podcast. If I have a coaching session with a certain client, I'm writing, I don't just write coaching session, I write coaching session with ABC person. I'm thinking about that meeting with them when I write it down. And it just has me so much more prepared for the meeting. When I walk into the meeting, it's almost as though I've been there already Mm -hmm. because I have in my mind. It's really beneficial if you've got a difficult conversation or if you have a training session, you know, because I spend a lot of my time training. So writing down the class, I'm thinking about the class and then I may all of a sudden remember, oh, I better make sure that I bring a speaker to play a video, you know, the audio part of a video, because maybe it won't work in our training, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. I think through those things. I am much more prepared because I have handwritten that note. Mm -hmm. Now, I keep, you know, I could, I know there's people that say, well, you know, I don't want all the paper. Okay, fine. You could scan it because I also handwrite my notes during the day in that same booklet. Um, I do keep some notes you know, in Evernote, because if I'm somewhere where I'm just, where I don't have my, my binder with me, it's real easy to just do a text Mm -hmm. to myself or, or, or a note like that. Or a lot of times I'll cut and paste things and put it into Evernote. But the nice part is then when I do my reflection, I've got it all there. Right. The handwritten thoughts. Uh, Today, I'm in two days of meetings right now. So today I was handwriting my notes. Now I, I know people that will use, you know, like an Apple pencil, you know, or a surface and they will handwrite their notes. It probably works the same, just isn't on paper. You know, it's still the same thing. It's the, I think you said it might be like muscle activation kind of thing as well. Mm -hmm. The word, it doesn't have to be paper, but the handwriting piece is the key. And and one of the things that I found was it, it activates a certain part of your brain that allows you to focus more on that moment and your brain believes that that's a much more important thing. So this is this um, reticular activating system, RAS, part of your brain. And it literally filters what you should be focusing on and what you shouldn't. And as soon as you write, it activates, it fires up part of your brain at a deeper level than just typing. So I'm not totally just old-fashioned. <laughs> No, but I think I, there's, I, there, there are ways to do it. It just it mm-hmm. it makes us more productive with less effort is the way I'm looking at it. Mm-hmm. So you're technically a millennial. Yep. Um, very technically savvy. So mm-hmm. how much handwriting do you do? Um, so similar to you, I do keep a um, planner of physical paper planner and also Mm -hmm. digital. I do something very similar. I keep everything in iCal, which syncs up with my iPhone and my MacBook. Um, Derek and I share some calendars so we can see, um, you know, if if he's got like a work dinner, it'll show up on my calendar. So I know he's not coming, you know, he won't be coming home right after work. But I do every Sunday morning, go through my iCal for the week, write it into my planner, which we keep in a corner of our kitchen so like everyone can see it everyone that (laughs) like my kids can read no just me mostly for me and Derek to to review um but similar to you except for more for home related things so when I write you know that Isla has preschool then I it triggers me to think like okay for the day before I need to put a reminder to pack her lunch Mm -hmm. um sure or if I know that I have an evening event one of the nights it's like okay I also write our dinner plans in the same planner so I'll say like okay I'm not going to be home this night for very long so dinner has to be something quick like BLTs or something in the crock pot um so it helps me work through some of those um things as well instead of just assuming like when I look at my digital calendar oh I have five things today but not really considering how they're all spatially aligned 
Exactly. Um, I also think for me, I don't do a ton of handwriting for work right now. I just don't have the need to. Sometimes if I'm trying to work through something or if it's something that um, requires some creativity, I need to map it out. I'll write it. Um, but I, um, I do a lot of that, my work stuff on the computer. Um, and what was I thinking? There was one more thing that I was going to say I do by paper and now I can't recall. It's your bucket list. Well, yes, my bucket list is also, (laughs) yes, that is hanging in my kitchen and we are checking that off, but I don't Man, I can't think of what that one thing sure. was. Well, it might come to you. You know, the yes. other thing that's the benefit of writing things down by hand is you can you can sketch an image or a mm-hmm. doodle that will help you remember something that how do I do that just with my laptop? I remember now. I just remembered. <laughs> there you go. I was going to say that when I do take notes, so for example, when we had our MACNE um, off-site retreat meeting yes. um, in the fall or so late summer. Um, I did, I brought my notebook and took paper notes there. And I found too that when I do that, things that clutter my mind, I can just like write in the margin. So instead of being distracted yeah. by them, and so I sometimes do become distracted by my computer. Um, you know, I, I'm like that person that has too many tabs open. Right. And so when I go, when I'm, using a notebook that's really not an option so mm-hmm. if i i t- will take my notes by hand and then if there's like something that keeps popping up in my head like you know we need to get x y and z from the grocery store like and i will let yep. get it out of my head and just like write it in the margin like okay sure. it's out perfect. perfect and i think that's one benefit of paper is that you can make those annotations or right you know highlight right. and circle and underline and cross out um to have more emphasis. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and I, I love that part about, you know, so you ended up, you're going to a strategic planning session type of thing, and so that's when you're going to you're gonna handwrite. I think mm-hmm. those are the types of events when you're doing, you know, working on a growth plan. Um, you know, the, the program that I talked about a few weeks back that we're going to launch um, later uh, in November, I'm actually doing a trial run with our staff this coming week. But there's a booklet that mm-hmm. I put together with lots of pages. I should lots of pages. There's probably, yeah, 12 pages. Mm-hmm. Um, because those are the things you want to write down. Because it really helps you think that thought at a much deeper level than if you were just typing it. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, I just, I can't wait to see people using it and really getting involved in, in really building that growth plan. But also in a really deep, deep, deep thinking kind of mindset. Uh, which, which really your handwriting piece is 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 so key to that. Uh, a couple of things I was seeing here too. If, if you're aging, it slows down your mental aging. I mean, we're all aging. And, <laughs> well, but you know, when my aging person, like when I start getting closer to senior citizen phase, I'm 58. You know, it was really bad when all of a sudden somebody said to me, "You can get a senior discount at Oof. like McDonald's." I'm like, "Be quiet! I don't want a senior <laughs> discount. I'm going to pay full price because I don't think." It's- you know, an AARP wants to say, no, just, I just throw it out on principle. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not there yet. It's not that I'm afraid of getting old, but I just don't think of 58 as being that old. But it is beneficial to stop, you know, to help slow down the, your mental aging. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're, because you, again, you're activating different parts of your brain as you write. So uh, it eases depression and anxiety. Um, there's so many things. Plus, Think about this. We're not supposed to stare at blue screens in the evening. I say this as I'm looking I, I at say, I say this as a I'm... laptop. And wait a minute. It's 10 after 9 as we're yeah. recording this. This mm-hmm. is not good. But you can take a piece of paper and a pencil mm-hmm. and journal. And mm-hmm. there's no blue screens. Yeah. And I think there's also something like sentimental about handwriting. Like yeah. a birthday card or... Um, I keep, I think I've mentioned that I keep journals for my girls and, you know, who knows what, what technology is going to be like and right. Like remember the floppy disks? Yes. So (laughs) think about all those documents I had saved from third grade on those floppy disks. Where are they now? But 
I, you know, my husband's family actually is very fortunate to have a long history, um, of like a, a genealogy binder where they um, have actual letters that his wow. great, great, great grandfather, I think, was writing. Um, that is so neat. About he, he was on like a warship and all all of these things, like an invention that he created and um wow. he's trying to get a patent on it. And we just we and you can see the handwriting and yeah. there's just like a piece of history there. And so I think that that's special too. That's another great point. You know, when I see the handwriting, I'm i I'm you know, like I'm thankful that I have some some notes from my grandparents. Me too. Mm -hmm. A card from, you know, some notes and cards from my uncle who passed away, mm -hmm. you know, and I'll have some of those from my parents. That's, it's different than reading a typed word. Mm -hmm. It was part of them. It was part of their expression that's on the paper. So I really encourage mm -hmm. people, write notes, write cards. You know, I'm not saying throw the digital world away because, you know, at this point I'm looking at upgrading my phone and at some mm -hmm. point upgrading my iPad and I'm into digital technology too, but that old handwriting. So I like the idea of, you know, just as I get back to the title of my post, paper, digital, or both, the answer is both. Yeah. And make the most of it. Yep. Anything else you think we should add or did we beat this horse to death? My one, I'm going to just get on a soapbox for a minute about... Go for it. One more thing. Photos. Since we're on the top, topic of paper digital or both, I think okay. we're, we're all walking around with like thousands Ooh. and thousands of photos yes. on our phones. And I am so, 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 so guilty too. Um, but I'm trying really hard to make sure that we are taking these photos, not all of them, but the good, the really special ones and putting and printing them out in photo books or just like single photos. Um, because like I said, I'm not going to hand my, when I die, I'm not going to hand my iPhone to my, <laughs> right. my, my grandchild. Here's, my floppy and be like, disc. <laughs> here's, here's the last, you know, 65 years. I'm right. gonna, and it's in the cloud. It's in the cloud. Just pull it down from the it's cloud. It's in the cloud, right. Um, you know, it's like print the photos, put them in, or you know, there's so many websites like we just recently did a photo book with Artifact Uprising. There's Shutterfly. Yep. There's um, you've spent all this money. Like, I know how much wedding photography costs. I know how much kid and family photography costs. Like any photographer will tell you, like, please, please, please print these out. Don't just right. store right. them in, in the cloud. Um, so that will be that. That is my soapbox. Print them out. Thank you for coming Good. to my TED talk. Um. <laughs> that is important. You know, that's a great one because the, we the we have these pictures that we'll never look at, mm -hmm. and that's sad. And someday our phone is going to be the floppy disk, mm -hmm. and we're going to say a what? So print it out. Yeah, we'll be wearing like contact lenses with Wi-Fi connection, and right. Oh, that's scary. Oh well. Yeah, but. <laughs> That's called progress. Yeah. So you're going to ask me what I'm going to talk about next week. I have no idea again. But something will come up and I'll hopefully mm -hmm. surprise you. Whatever inspires you. Exactly. Any good plans for the weekend? Um, no, no. Just kind of hanging out. Hopefully checking them, some things off the bucket list. And All right. That's good. I know you're traveling. I'm traveling. So my family from Ohio will be at my house Actually, this evening at 10, they'll arrive. And so I will get there at some point late tomorrow night because I'm going to, the meeting ends at six and I'm going to get right in my car and drive home. So oh, good. So at least I'll spend Sunday with my family, mm -hmm. which is great. All right. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. This was The Next Page. Mm -hmm.